turn to your neighbor and say, it's time to praise the Lord. It's time to be revived. It's time to arise and shine. And turn to your neighbor and say, for your light has come. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Bless everyone around you. Ask your neighbor, are you ready to praise the Lord? I want to hear from you. You sure? It sounds like that. Well, let's praise the Lord, Paul. Come on. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus is a mighty God. A mighty Jesus, God. you're a mighty God. A mighty God. All powers bow before you. A mighty God. Sickness was bowing for you. A Jesus, you're a mighty God. A mighty God. Jesus, you're a mighty God. A mighty God. Every knee bow before you. A
Amen. Let's praise the Lord more. Hallelujah. It's, it's wonderful to praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Give God a great hand. Thank you so much. Bless the people around you. Hallelujah. Thank you. You can take your seat. We will worship now more. Amen. The people who stream, I want to say welcome to the people who stream. May you receive tonight what God's got in mind for you. Everyone want of Jesus. Jesus was such a great guy, but such a great guy. I say a guy because some people think that it was God walking on the earth. He was not. You are mistaken. It was the Word who became flesh, and flesh can never be God. 
I say again, flesh can never be God. So what the scripture says in John, the word became flesh. Meaning that God Almighty became a man. And when he became a man, he became 100% a man. He didn't take shortcuts. He didn't cheat. When God entered into the world, he became a little lower than the angels. That means he was not God because God can never be a little lower than the angels. That means that the word of God through whom everything was created became low, a little lower than the angels for a short while, the time period that he lived on this earth. And, that, and the Bible says he was the son of God. The man Jesus is the son of God. A God can never be a son. He cannot be a son. When we speak about God Almighty, we speak about Jesus, then we speak about the word of God through whom everything was created, through him and, for, and by him and for him. Amen. When he walked this earth, he was the son of man and the son of David. Completely, totally, flesh and blood, a man. God became a man. He didn't cheat. When he came to take away the authority from Satan, Satan stole that authority from a man. And it had to be a man to take it away from Satan. A man that never sinned. A man that was tested. So God didn't take shortcuts. He didn't cheat. When God entered into this world as a human being, as flesh, he didn't take shortcuts. He left being God behind in heaven. And he became totally man. He didn't cheat. He didn't take a shortcut. He was a man. And as a man, he defeated Satan. Not as part God and part man. Because, I mean, for God to defeat the devil, it's just nothing. It had to be a man. Because it was a man that gave the, his God-given authority away to Satan by his disobedience to the command of God. Amen. Satan, ever you be careful of disobedience towards God. Because it gives the devil access to your life to steal some of the authority and blessing that God has given you. That give evil people the authority and the power to steal of your goodness and your blessing, your success. They can steal it and they do steal it from people. They do. It's easy. They do it very easily. So by the way, I need to explain something to you. I will do it now. Jesus appeared to his disciples. His apostles. Actually, his apostles. Not the disciples. There's a difference between a disciple and an apostle. We are all disciples of Jesus, but we're not all apostles. Amen? Here he appeared not to all the disciples, but he appeared to the apostles. The 11 that was left after he was crucified, after he got raised from the dead. Then after he was raised from the dead, he appeared. I take you to Mark 16. And I take you to verse 14. After that, he appeared to the eleven, because one betrayed him, and he went and hanged himself. And he went to hell. The Bible is very clear about that. We don't like to say these things, but some people go to hell. Who are the people that go to hell? Come on, God is a God of love. How will he send people, if he's a God of love, to hell? You know, people make their own choices, and it's so sad. Hell was never created for people. Never created for any human, not even one. And God didn't plan and God didn't mean, meant for one human to go to hell. But hell was created for Satan and his angels. And Satan who led a rebellion in heaven. And the reason why these spirits, beings, these fallen angels can never be forgiven. Because no one deceived them. They deceived themselves. The reason why you can be saved and God became a man and paid for your sin and became your sin and took your sin upon him. And when you believe in him, you can be forgiven. It's because you didn't deceive yourself. You got deceived by Satan. Adam got deceived by Satan. He didn't mean to do the things that he did. He was trapped and snared by Satan. Through his wife. And his wife was snared by Satan. When Satan then came up front to, he, to her... He came in the form of the snake. The reason why fallen angels can never ever be forgiven is because no one deceived them. They deceived themselves. 
And therefore, people who deceive themselves also cannot be forgiven. For example, I don't, I don't play with words. The Seventh-day Adventist, they deceive themselves. It's a horrible thing. I pray for grace for, that, for those people. They are not Christians, so by the way. What is a Christian, so by the way? What is a believer in Jesus? What is a disciple of Jesus? There's a person that believes. Uh, anyone who believes. This is the definition of disciple, Christian, a true Christian, because there's religious Christians, and then there's true Christians. Religion is never of God. Religion is a false spirit, antichrist spirit. I'm not religious whatsoever. But I've got the Holy Spirit, and I love God with all my heart, and I love Jesus by the Spirit. Not in a religious manner. Okay? Not at all. Pray, Lord Jesus, set me free from the spirit of religion in the name of Jesus. Okay, what is a true believer? A true believer is someone who believes that the only way to go to heaven is by faith and what Jesus did for him. Very simple and very easy. By faith. And this is done by grace. And what do we believe in? We believe that Jesus Paid for our sins completely and totally. And you can never add anything to that. And this morning I said to some of the disciples here and workers here at church, with the opening this morning, that if you add, try to add anything, anything to what Jesus has done, anything, you add anything to what Jesus has done, the Bible says in Galatians, then you will be alienated from the final sacrifice of the body of Jesus and the blood of Jesus who paid for your sin. So in other words, if I still want to, like some people in Africa, and all over the world maybe, but mostly in Africa, you still slaughtered the chicken for God. You still slaughtered the goat for God. Then it means that you are alienated, completely and totally alienated from what Jesus has done for you, the final sacrifice. There's only one sacrifice that is acceptable to God, only one sacrifice, and that is the flesh of Jesus Christ. Give your hand, amen. That's all. The Bible says he's the Adam. He's the last Adam. Pastor Wim, you said this morning the second Adam. Yes, second Adam. But the last Adam, it says in Corinthians. The last Adam. The Adam of finality. And he has, he, when, he, when he on the cross paid the price for us and it was complete, he said, it is finished. You can never add anything to what Jesus has done. And the problem with people with the Seventh-day Adventists, they say you need to keep the Shabbat in order to go to heaven. Or some people say you need to be circumcised to go to heaven. All these people, whether you add to the cross of Christ, the sacrifice of Jesus' body, whether you add circumcision or a seventh day, or you try by your eating to get to heaven. I don't eat pork because if I eat pork, I will not make heaven. And if I don't eat pork, I will make heaven. Then you are alienated from the final sacrifice of Jesus. Therefore, anyone that thinks he will be saved because he keeps the Shabbat will be alienated from Christ and will never go to heaven. It's impossible for him to enter heaven because if he's operating, when he keeps one part of the law of Moses, He's obligated to keep the whole law, and no one can do it. No one can do it. Then a person like that, if the one who circumcised himself in order to go to heaven, the one who keeps the Shabbat in order to go to heaven, the one who eat, who um, abstain from certain foods to go to heaven, is obligated to keep the whole law, then the sacrifice of Christ is not for them anymore. The Bible clearly says they are alienated from the, and separated from the sacrifice of the body of Jesus. Then they need to keep all the sacrifices, all the feasts in the Old Testament. And no one can do it. No one can do it. Number one, you do not have enough money for all the animals you need to sacrifice to begin with in this life. Do I say it's wrong to be circumcised? No, I don't say that depending on what reason you get circumcised for. I know some men who get circumcised for health reasons. No problem. No problem whatsoever. 
But if you get circumcised in order to go to heaven, then you're alienated from Christ. You are deceived completely. You will not go to heaven. If you, circ- if you circumcise yourself in order to go to heaven, if you circ- got circumcised because your custom says so, that's good. Like the most people in Africa, they do that. And another reason a man might be c- circumcised, I never understood this, but not today I understand it. I knew a certain Jew that was very, very arrogant. I thought, and I, he was arrogant. Then he said one day to all the people who are not Jews, you can never preach to the Jews. And I thought, you are arrogant. But today I, but today I know what he meant. A Jew will not listen to anyone who preached to him that's not circumcised. He will not. A religious Jew, you're not circumcised as a man and you preach to him. He will not listen to you. And that's why Paul took Timothy. Timothy was not completely a Jew. He was a half-breed, like Benny Hinn. He was half-Jew and a half-Greek, and he was not circumcised. And as, a, as a, quite an older man, maybe more 45, something like that, Paul took him and circumcised him because he wanted to send him to Jews to preach the gospel to the Jews. And the Jews would not listen to a man that's not circumcised. And if I need to send you today at the mission trip to, a trip to Israel to go and preach the gospel in your Jerusalem, you need to come that we circumcise you first. But I will not do it. I'll send you to the doctor. They will not listen to you. Religious Jews will not listen to you if you're not circumcised. Forget it. And for that reason, Paul took Timothy and he circumcised him. Not for salvation purposes. He didn't circumcise him to go to heaven. He circumcised him for one reason. So that the Jews will listen to the gospel that he preached. So the Bible says, to the Jews we come, become a Jew. So if you're not circumcised and want to go and preach to the Jews, I've got news for you. You need to go and be circumcised. Not for salvation purposes. So the Jews might listen to you. Life is that an eye-opener. I speak about religious Jews. They will not listen. Forget it. They will not listen to a man that's not circumcised. So Timothy got circumcised because he was not a Jew. He was a half-breed. He was a Jew, Greek. Okay? He was a Jew, Greek. So Paul wanted to send him to the Jews, to preach to the Jews, and knew they will not listen to him. So Paul circumcised him. But not for salvation purposes. Salvation, you go, you get saved one way. No other way. By the final sacrifice of the last Adam, which is called Jesus. It's the sacrifice the sacrifice of his body, his flesh, and where his blood got shed. It's the only way you can go to heaven. By faith in what he has done for you on the cross. By faith in his sacrificed body. The final sacrifice, you can never add to that. Nothing. Nothing. That's why I don't like religion. I hate religion. Because all religion wants you to add something. To add a talit to you. To add a kippah. To add something. A Jewish star or something. I detest all religion, and so does God. God is not a religious God. And it will religion, um, religion, definition of religion is man's effort to please God. Man's effort to save himself. That is the definition of religion. Man's effort to save himself. Say to never, don't try to do that. You get saved by faith in the sacrifice of the flesh of Jesus on the cross, alone. And you receive this by faith, and this is a grace. So you got saved by grace and by grace alone. No other way. Amen. And after you got saved, there's some things you need to drink the cup of the Lord. You need to drink the cup that the Lord has put before you. And those who go into full-time ministry like apostles, etc., etc., they drink not their own cup, they drink the cup of the Lord. And that's another cup that few people can drink. 
few people can drink that cup. And those who drink it, they drink it only by grace. Because they partake us of the death of Jesus. They walk the walk that Jesus walked. They walk in his footsteps. And they carry within their bodies the death of Jesus. Those who preach the gospel. Those who are called by God. They carry within their bodies the death of Jesus. And by carrying the death of Jesus in their bodies, the Bible says, that death manifests into life for those that they preach to. And most of the time, it's not for themselves. The healing when I pray for people is most of the time not for me, but for those I pray for. So as a born-again Christian, you drink the, your cup that the Lord has placed before you. And that's not cheap, and it's not, it's, not, it's not cheap at all. It takes all of your life. But then there's certain people who God, God called to preach the gospel. They don't drink the cup, their own cup. They drink the Lord Jesus' cup. That's another cup. Amen. So there's one way to be saved. And that is through the flesh, sacrificial flesh of the man Jesus. Give God a hand for that sacrifice. Amen. There's a one way to be saved. Many people, they work out other ways, means to be saved. Oh, they want to be in a better stand. They do this, they try this, they try this, they try that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Those who drink the Lord's cup, they follow in his footsteps and do what he has done. The number one thing that Jesus has done, he fasted 40 days. He pleased the Father 100%, and he had claimed nothing for himself. But the life he lived and everything that he did was for other people. Jesus said, anyone that wants to follow me, not only apostles or preachers, but anyone, that's disciples, anyone that wants to follow me must deny himself. He must get rid of his self sentence He must deny himself. Pick up his cross and follow Jesus daily. And dying to all of his own desires. You can never be a disciple of Jesus if you are rich. Sure, I say something that is wild. And people take some time to hear when I say this. These are not my words. That was the words of Jesus. Jesus said, it's impossible for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. You still want to be rich? You want to be rich? I don't preach to you the gospel of the sophisticated people who got three planes which they owe themselves. I preach the gospel of Jesus. Jesus said, a rich man, it's impossible to enter the kingdom of heaven. It's impossible. And if Jesus said it, I'm not going to change that. I cannot change that. And I say tonight to you again, and there's some people stream, and I don't stumble, because people stumbled over Jesus and they left him. 72, 70, 72 disciples left him because of his preaching. Jesus said, it's impossible for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. It didn't change, it will never change. You want to be rich? Let me tell you the secret of having enough. Or having more than enough, even finances. Whatever, whatever I need in life, I always get it. Because my God, oh my God, listen very carefully, my God owed the cattle on a thousand hills. And that's what many prosperity preachers preach. And that's so true. But they act as if the cattle on a thousand hills is this, them, is this. The cattle on my father, not me, my father owed the cattle on a thousand hills, not me. So whenever I got a need, my father's got more than enough, and he will give me what I need. He will always give me what I need, and he will give me more than enough. 
But it's not mine. That's the point. It's not mine. That's what he has given me and his grace. And if I got a lot of money, I do not have at this point of time. But I had in the past and I will have again. Whenever I got money and abundance, I know that I know that I know. It's not mine. And that's the secret. If a rich man comes to Jesus and he cannot part with his riches and give full control. I don't speak about, say, I give it to God, but do not give it to God. And he doesn't give full control of his finances over to God. He will not enter into the kingdom of heaven. He will not. You get many rich people saying, oh, I've given full control to God. When it went tested, they didn't really give full control to God. It's like Ananias and Sapphira who wanted to copy Barnabas. I wanted the same fame and same goodness and favor that was on him. So they also went to sell their property like Barnabas did. Because Barnabas was the rich young ruler whom Jesus said, it's impossible for a rich man to be saved. So later on he came to his senses because Jesus said, what is impossible for a man is possible with God. So what is possible with, possible with God? So that he can work in a man's heart to part with his riches and give full control of all his riches over to God. So Barnabas went his way, the rich young ruler. He was unable to go and sell everything as Jesus said. He couldn't do it. And I don't blame him. Because he worked hard for his money. Now he was going, sell all his possessions and give it to the poor. That's tough, man. If I say it's easy tonight to you, I'm lying. It's tough. You worked hard for your money. You need to give it away like that? That's not easy. I don't blame him. It was, he was unable to do it. And he was honest enough to just walk away from Jesus, knowing that he couldn't do it. But then, the words of Jesus who said, what is impossible for a rich man is possible with God, started to work in his spirit. And eventually, after Jesus was gone, he went to the apostles, sold everything that he had, and laid it at the apostles' feet so the apostles could do with it whatever they seems fit. And when he did it, the plan of God for the rich young ruler kicked him into being, came into being, and he became an apostle together with Paul. So God's plan got fulfilled in his life after he parted with his finances by the working of God in his heart. And then Ananias and Sapphira said, no, we want to do the same because we see you, Barnabas, you've got a great anointing now. You became an apostle, great favor and goodness. We want that as well. So they went and sold all these things, seemingly lying. They didn't sell everything. They kept some of the money back. They came to the apostles and said, here is all the money we sold our possessions and laid it at Peter's feet. First the woman and then the man or the man and the woman, I can't remember. Peter said, why? Who? Who deceived you and lying to the Holy Spirit? What was the big sin? They wanted the anointing that was on Barnabas. They wanted the authority and the goodness and favor that was on Barnabas. Barnabas paid the price. They could not pay the price. They sold the property, but they kept back some of the money. And they lied about it. If they didn't lie about it, nothing would have happened to them. But because they lied about it, they was now playing around with the anointing of God. Whoever play around with the anointing of God is in danger to be killed. Peter said, who deceived you? How is it that Satan deceived you? To lie to the Holy Spirit. Because you didn't lie to a man, but you lied to the Holy Spirit. And the one dropped dead and the other one as well. And they got buried. And the fear of the Lord fell on the whole church. Oh God, are you the God of love? Yes, but you don't play around with the Holy Spirit and anointing. And many people do it. 
and they burned their fingers. Let this be a teaching and a blessing to everyone. It's impossible for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. I'm not going to change that. I will be a false preacher if I do. Pastor, are you poor, you may ask. No, not poor at all. My father's got a f- cattle on a thousand hills. But my bank, I think there's 500 rand in my bank account. You look at my bank account, you say, oh, he's poor. But whenever I go ask, go ask God, I need something, and I ask him for that something. He always provides for me because he's got, he's got the cattle on a thousand hills. Not me, him. And whenever I need, my God provides for me. And he will provide for me in abundance, always. Give him a great hand. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. And that's the difference which people do not understand to preach prosperity. God wants us to prosper. God wants to give us more than enough. He wants us to have everything that we need. Listen to, listen to what I say. Everything that we need. And I always make sure that the thing that I ask, I need them. But the cattle on the thousand hills is not mine. It's my, it's my father's. And whenever I need something, I ask him. Him who's got the cattle on the thousand hills. I use the cattle on the thousand hills because many prosperity people preach that. And they're acting and preaching as if the cattle on the thousand hills belong to them. It doesn't belong to them. It doesn't belong to me. It belongs to the Father. That means that he will give without measure to anyone who asks. And if you've, got, if you've got a need, you ask him for that. You ask the Father in Jesus' name. He will give to you if you need it. For sure you will. He will give you the Spirit without measure. He will give you money if you need money. He will provide for you the money and he will, he will actually provide. We need to be careful because some people think they can sit still and wait for God to give, drop the money in their hands. It doesn't work like that. He, he will give you strategy in your business to make good money. And then when you follow God's principles and you give your tithe and your offering, but not only your tithe and your offering, you need to work hard as well. When God gives you when you live by God's principles, you give your tithe and your offering. And you've got to open hand towards the poor and God's work. Then he will give you strategy. How to make more money. It's not going to fall into your hands. You're going to work. And when God gives you that strategy, you put everything in and you go for it. Some people say, oh, God said he's going to provide for me. I sit still now. I wait on God now. The Bible says those who wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. That's so true. But the waiting on the Lord is always an active waiting. Always an active waiting. You do what your hand finds to do. Always. For those who sit still and hang around and do nothing, God doesn't respect lazy people at all. He doesn't respect that. Whatever your hand finds to do, do that. Waiting on God is a very active waiting. And I don't hear no amens, no way. You've got to add amen. Normally we preach, the people preach nice things, and the people are excited. They say, Amen, 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 Amen. Tonight I hear no Amen. Because, you know, there's a saying that says, Truth hurts. Truth hurts. And the sword that I use is cutting deep. Hallelujah. Amen. You give your tithe, your offering. You want to be blessed? You listen to God, He will give you strategy, you follow that strategy with all your heart, you work hard. Then God will bless you, He will give you new strategy. I mean, always new strategy to make more money. I mean, especially when you've got a heart for the poor. Those who give unto the poor lend unto the Lord. You've got a heart for the poor, I, God will bless you. It will open to you more and more and more. God loves the poor. The needy is with them. He's with them in Jesus' name. Amen. 
So I say tonight to you again, a rich man's got no chance to get into heaven. What is, what is impossible for that rich man is possible with God when he works in the rich man's heart to give over full control to God. The rich man who didn't give over full control to God will not enter the kingdom of heaven. It's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. That will never change. Now, I knew a couple of rich people in my life. Quite a couple. And all these people that I knew, or not all, most of them, were Christians. And many of them helped me in this ministry to plant churches in Malawi, Mozambique, and all the other things that I'd done concerning missions and even this building. They all give, gave God full control of their finances. I salute them, but I salute God who worked in their hearts. Salute God. Give Him a great hand. Amen. I actually knew quite some, many. But I also knew rich men, rich people, who never gave nothing to God's kingdom. And I knew about what I was doing when I was really going a lot into Africa, planting churches. And one day I presented my plan to a certain rich man, so sad. He looked at me, he was so excited. He said to me, never give up, never give up. But he didn't give me one sin. And he died with all his riches. Rich people can enter God's kingdom if they're not rich anymore, meaning they gave over full control of their riches to God. And when you give full control over to God, it's not yours anymore. It's not yours anymore, it's God's. I belong to Him. And then whenever, whatever God tells you to do, and I, know, I, I knew such people. I knew such people. Actually, most of them passed on. They never know. I knew such people. Everything that God told them to do concerning finances, they would do. That is not, that is not impossible with God, but impossible with a man. I knew a couple of people like that. Everything that God told them to do concerning finances, because they gave over full control to God. Whenever God told them to do something, they did it immediately because they knew the money didn't belong to them. It belonged to God. I knew a couple of people like that. They are with the Lord now. I can mention those who are with the Lord, but those who are still alive, I don't want to take, touch their reward. But I don't want to mention their names. I just give God honor. Amen. Amen. The honor belongs to the Lord. I knew a couple of people like that. So just to help you and to encourage you to think, if you maybe think it's impossible, there's, there's no one that can do it. I will, I will tell you how many. I will not tell you their names. Let me just think. Amen. One, two, three, four. Now I need to start to think. Four. So it's not impossible with God. I knew, knew four money people who were quite wealthy. Whenever God told them, no, f oh, five, give God a hand for five. Amen, voila, hallelujah. Thank you, five, amen. I wish it was seven. I knew five wealthy people, very wealthy, that God blessed, that gave ownership of their finances and their riches and their wealth over to God. And whenever God told them, to do something that didn't hesitate, nothing. I, knew, I had the privilege of knowing five. Of those five, many of them are still, few are still living. But they, you know, the devil hated them as well, obviously. And the devil always came for them. But to encourage you tonight, it's not impossible. It is possible. I knew five People who were very wealthy. And they never hesitated when God told them to give them to God's kingdom. And that's amazing. I knew some that would not give to God. But I knew five. I might just made this number grow at least to seven for now. Amen. Give God a hand. Amen. That would not hesitate when God told them to do something with concerning finances. 
They are the ministry of giving. But they're always under huge attack because that's a ministry that wins souls for the heavens. For the heavens. Wins souls for the heavens. No one can do outreaches to countries, unrich countries, if they do not have money. And pastors and people like me cannot take the time to do business because to do business and make it do successful business takes some time. So God always raises up people who is in the business world to accumulate money for his kingdom so that people like me can send people to unrich areas because you cannot go to unrich areas if you do not have money. It's impossible. You need to go through border post. It takes a lot of money. You need vehicles. It takes money. You need to put fuel in those vehicles. It takes money. You need to take food to worth that takes money. When you go to those unrich people, they always expect you to bless them with food and blessings and money as well. So you need money for that as well. So it's quite expensive, so by the way. I pray. I knew five people like that. I pray that God will give me two more and the number will be nice. Seven, give God a hand, dummy. In my whole time of ministry, I knew five. I pray that the number will be completed before I go to be with the Lord. Another two, please, Lord, because I do not have the time to make do business. Please give me two more people like that. The other one, the last one died very recently. I pray for two more. In Jesus' name. The last one died recently. When he passed on after a couple of days or weeks, I said to God, God, this man really did what you called him to do. What will I do now? And I started to pray for another one. But I pray for two more. Give God a hand on me. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. God is good. Give him a great hand. Amen. Hallelujah. When you get a pastor, a pastor like me who's 60 years old or older, you think you always tell them something new or you present them with something new. When you get to the age of 60 as a minister, you've seen a couple of things in life. you met a couple of people. You come to me and you think, You've got a problem that's going to shock the pastor. But you do not know. I've seen hundreds of your problem. Amen? And I've seen hundreds of your type. Amen? You cannot shock a pastor that is 60 years old. You cannot shock him with something new. Amen? Give God a hand. Amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. You come to me for counseling, think, yes, if this pastor hear about my problem, he will be shocked. No, you got, I've got a surprise for you. You cannot shock me anymore. I'm see, I've seen too many. I've, I've, I cannot say I've seen it all, but I've seen, too, I've seen many things. I've seen murderers coming to repentance in this ministry that I prophesy in our midst as a murderer and he needs salvation now. And then as I walked up to my office, he followed my steps because he cannot wait to repent. That's amazing. Give God a hand for that. Amen. And very interesting, that murderer is dead now. He's gone. I never told people. people. I tell them for the first time. One day I prophesied here, there's a murderer in our midst. God wants to forgive him. He needs to come and rep repent and confess his sin. And I didn't expect him to confess it in a meeting. I said, you need to come and confess. And as I walked up there, I, I, knew, he, I, know, I knew who he was. But I didn't want to point him out. Because that's between him and God. And if he wants to confess it, that's his business. I'm not going to expose him in a meeting like this. I knew, his, I knew it was him. 
And as I walked up there, he was walking in my footsteps. Couldn't wait to confess. When we were sitting in the office, he said to me, Pastor, I am that murderer. I need forgiveness. And now that I preach about it, I realize he's gone. After he confessed that sin, he's in heaven now. Give God a hand. Amen. Not immediately. It took um, three years. And then he passed on. Jesus, you are good. Sometimes when I preach, I wonder what I'm saying. But give God a hand. Amen. Hallelujah. He is so good and so amazing. When God gives you opportunity to confess, don't postpone. Do it now. Because when we preach, grace is fresh and very powerful. But when you say, ah, not now, ah, now what's he going to think about me? Ah, no, no, I'll, I'll, I'll think about it. Then you come three weeks after that. The grace is not so fresh anymore. The grace lost its freshness because you won't be obedient. When you hear someone on repentance and confession, and you've got something to confess, you need to do it immediately. Then God's power is amazing and delivers you in Jesus' name. Give your Lord a great hand. Amen. Hallelujah. God, you are good. Everyone shout, God, you are good. Afterwards, he appeared to the eleven themselves as they were reclining at the table after lunch. And he rebuked them for their unbelief and hardness of heart because they had not believed those who saw him after he had risen. He rebuked them. God always rebuked people of unbelief. And he said to them, Go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole of creation. And other translations say, to every creature. Not only even humans, every creature. Because God didn't die only for humans. Some people think so. He died for the whole of creation. The Bible says that the whole of creation Wait in eagerness for the sons of God to be revealed so that they might be delivered from the bondage of sin. The whole of creation is in the bondage of sin because the ruler and the manager that God appointed over the creation has sinned. So this sin filtered through to all of the people, to all of the creation, to the plants, to the animal, to everything on the earth, to the fish, and God didn't only came to save the humans, but he came number one for the humans. He came to reconcile all of creation unto himself so that the whole creation might be delivered of bondage. And that will be so when Jesus comes back on those clouds. Give God a hand. Amen. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole of creation. Why the whole of creation? Because the whole of creation waiting eagerly for the sons of God to be revealed because when the sons of God is revealed when Jesus comes back they will be delivered salvation at this point of time is for humans mostly and after that when Jesus comes back the whole of creation will be delivered from the bondage of sin and will be restored and you will see the whole of creation the earth everything in its original state the way God created them. And I cannot wait to see it. Give God a hand. Amen. Go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole of creation. As the translation said, to every creature. Whoever believed and got himself baptized will be saved. But whoever does not believe will be condemned. Say to God, to, hey, believe. And these signs will accompany those who believe, the company of believers. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak in new tongues. Hallelujah. Amen. They will pick up serpents. 
with their hands like Paul on the island of Patmos. And the snake bit him, which was a viper, and nothing happened to him. Give God a hand for that. Amen. And if they drink any deadly poison, it will not hurt them. Now let me tell you, I got poison in my body 12 years ago. I almost died, but I'm still here and getting better day by day. Hallelujah. God is good. Give him a great hand. Amen. I didn't drink the poison. I got poisoned, okay? Hallelujah. They will lay their hands on the sick, and they will recover. So then the Lord Jesus, after he had spoken to them, was taken up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of, of the Father. And they went out and preached everywhere while the Lord, the apostles, okay, and while the Lord worked with them and confirmed the message by the signs that followed, as Jesus said here. Yeah. Give God a hand. Amen. Hallelujah. Do you want to be rich? Do you want to be health wealthy? Do it. But do it under control of the Holy Spirit and, and give full control of your business to God. So that He might bless you. So you have always more than enough to give to God's work and to give to the poor, the needy, the hungry. And those who are in need, in Jesus' name. I listened to a song of a certain guy who was a really old sinner. Oh, what was his name now? Johnny Cash. Johnny, Johnny Cash. He was once a sinner and he got saved and he started to serve Jesus. And I heard a song about him. It was a great song. A man in black. Why will a man who is a Christian wear black clothing? And then he's singing this song. I'm not going to tell you the whole song, but it impressed me. The black clothing that he was wearing was because he was mourning and feeling for all those who are hungry. For all the old people who got rejected by their own, old, own children and old age homes and sitting there alone in their pain, in their longing for their children and their loved ones. And all those who sit in rebellion, in jails, I wear black clothing, he said. And all the reckless ones, because of their recklessness, find them, found, found themselves crippled, harmed. I carry black people for black clothes for them. All those who are severely depressed, and all the children whose parents went through divorce, and the children, orphans, that sit in orphanages. And all those who love, lost loved ones, I carry black to remind me of their pain so that I will always have an open heart and an open hand for them in Jesus' name. Amen. Johnny Cass, the man in black, listen to that song. Go to YouTube, look at Johnny Cass, the man in black, listen to that song. It will touch your heart. Give God a hand. Amen. The man in black. So when I come to church with a black suit and a black shirt, know that I will also, like Johnny Cass, Johnny Cass, I will also remember the poor, the hungry, the depressed, those who lost loved ones, children, that went, whose parents went through the wars and they, they sat with that devilish pain, Amen. Amen. And all the people in old age homes whose children doesn't visit them anymore and rejected them. And all they got is the memories. When their children were young, babies and then young people, and how they looked after them but now got rejected. Never turn your face against your own flesh and blood. I sit with my own mother in my house. I think her mind is not so right anymore. 
And you know, sometimes she's bothering me and bothering the children by asking so many questions. But I remember once upon a time when I was a bad guy, a reckless guy, who was in trouble. That she would do anything to get me out of that trouble. And she paid money to get me out of trouble. I'm not going to tell you everything that, I, that I've done and where I've been. But she paid money to get me out of trouble. She would do anything to get me out of trouble. The old lady that's now living in my house, and sometimes irritate my household and even me, with her many questions because of her old age, I will not forget what she has done for me when she was still in her right mind, would do anything for me, paying money to get me out of trouble, and prayed when I was a sinner, I will not forget it. As a fool who forget it. Pray, Lord Jesus. Sometimes I need to wear black as well. How arrogant children can be. So when their parents are old, they're arrogant. We don't need you anymore. We can cope without you now. We know the old people, their brains deteriorate. It's like they cannot think so straight anymore and sometimes talk nonsense, which irritates you as a child. But once upon a time, they changed your nappies and wiped your bum. Don't be arrogant. Once upon a time, they changed your nappies, they wiped your bum, and they fed you with a spoon because you couldn't, couldn't eat yourself. Respect them forever. Give God a hand. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Respect them and got rid of the arrogance of youth in Jesus' name, the foolishness of youth. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Say to your neighbor, once upon a time, your mother changed your nappies, wiped your bum, and fed you with a spoon when you couldn't do it yourself. When you couldn't eat yourself. Always respect them. When they're old and they cannot bath themselves anymore, and their minds are not so right anymore. Keep on respecting them, please. In Jesus' name. Amen. Give your glory a hand for old people. Hallelujah. I got touched by Johnny Cass singing this song, The Man in Black. Amen. Pray, Lord God of heaven, teach me respect. And teach me to honor those who deserve my honor. I mean, I tell you, once upon a time, your mother wiped your bum, changed your nappies. Your stinking nappies. And they didn't get tired of doing that. I looked at my own wife today. Amazing thing about a woman. Men and women are very different. You know, when women do something to do it again, to do it again, to do it again, to do it again, to do it again. And I saw my wife today for, for the how many time she prepared me a food of plate. Never get tired of doing that. She do it every day. And she never get tired of doing that. There's an amazing thing about a godly woman. Give God a hand for godly woman. Amen. She do these things every day. She do it to do it again. You know, Sam, when you fix the car, you fix it maybe in s for six months at least not to do it again. Amen, Sam. Amen, Sam. You change the oil of the car for maybe six to eight months not to do it again. But your wife make you food every day to do it tomorrow night again, and the night after that again, and again and again. 
and they don't grow tired of that. Same with your mother. When you were young, give God a hand. Amen. Hallelujah. Can you give God a hallelujah for your mother? Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Mother, if you're listening, God bless you. Ma, as jy luister, die Heere sê in jou, in Jesus naam, ek vir jou baie lief. Amen en amen. Hallelujah. God is good. Give him a great hand. Amen. The man in black. Hallelujah. Amen. One service we will all come with black for a very good reason. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let's give our tithe and offering to God Almighty. In Jesus' name. Thank you. Let's give with a joyful heart. Those who do internet banking, God bless you. Never forget to do it and don't become a God robber. Because anyone that doesn't give his tithe and offering is a God robber. Don't be a God robber. Give unto God what, what, you, what God asks of you, your tithe and your offering in Jesus' name. Amen. So the church of Jesus can do what it needs to do in the name of Jesus. Amen. Jump to your feet. Give God a wife offering of gratefulness. Everyone shout, gratefulness. Give God a wife offering for your parents. Parents. Give God a wife offering of your loved one. Give him a loved one. Come and give with joy unto Jesus. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. What shall I say? Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, we're going to pray for those who need prayer tonight. People who stream, send in your prayer request. We will pray for you in Jesus' name. Please honor your father and mothers always. Think about those who are hungry. Think about those who cry. Think about those who are in prison. Think about those who make mistakes. Think about those who sit with severe depression. Think about those in the hospitals who got involved in accidents and whatever they got involved in. And think about them and pray for them. Always in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you. Everyone who need prayer tonight, please come to the front. I want to pray for you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Those who need prayer.
people who stream sent in your prayer request, we will pray for you in the name of Jesus. And God will answer your prayer. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus, I will bring restoration. I will come with my spirit. I will work in the right hearts. And it will be done in Jesus' name. Amen. Wrote this, I know. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we pray that you provide for this man in the name of Jesus. And you open the hearts and minds and ears that they will see and hear in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that you answer all our prayers. Look at my eyes. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Good in you. Yeah. This is amazing. Well, don't you mean it? Yes. Amen. Thank you, Jere. Thank you for winning. Thank you, second sin. And you know, funny Jesus. Amen. Sin for you, my friend. Where? Tu kan se me chasse ma hai? In the mighty name of Jesus. Fat, fat. Hello, friend. To come it. What's the pain? What is fat? In the mighty name of Jesus. Zimu kusi mechasa makaya atla wa la bayi. Douglas. In Jesus' name. Hello, my friend. What can I feel about? Okay. Um, okay. Mm. 
Okay. And that was a footprint from my uncle Martin Luther King. Mm. Okay. It's not going to be a legend. It can't. Come, Kom, give you. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Fat you on. Fat. Hello, friend. How are you, man? It's good. Hmm? Yes. Okay. Thank you, Lord, that you bless his project. And I pray you revive his spirit in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Hello, Purity. How are you? To do Sibicat Lama Qua Baba. Bibi Bogona Mahasi Bihai. No Lucusi Mahasi. Lord, I thank you for complete healing and protection against sickness and disease. In the mighty name of Jesus. To Lucusi Mahasi. Amen. Oh, me. Okay, beauty. What can I pray for you? It's mine. Huh? Oh, thank you so much, Sissy. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Yes. Thank you so much. I appreciate this so much. Thank you. I, I will be blessed using this, okay? Thank you, thank you, thank you, okay? God bless you in Jesus' name. God give you the wisdom that you need in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. We also think about the Zulu family, the royal family. Amen. Our condolences with them. Amen. And we pray, we pray for them. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. Hello, my friend. How are you, eh? You know, it's good to see you, eh? Thank you, Lord. What can I pray for you, friend? Mm. Yes, that I heard about it, yeah. Come, my friend. You still study? What do you study? I just went to school. Okay. Okay. Just want all the things. Okay. Come. Stand to here. Friend, I'm going to pray for you. Father, thank you. Your peace and your power in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, you anoint him for what he needs to do. He cannot do it himself. And I thank you, Lord, your anointing fall on him now in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you, Jesus. Lord, your anointing, fall on him to do what he needs to do, also for his studies, in the name of Jesus. Lord, complete the task in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Look at my eye in my eyes. In the name of Jesus. Lord, thank you for guidance and wisdom. In the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you. Jesus name. Stand up, huh? Hmm? In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. God's good. I I'll give you more. In Jesus' name. More than enough. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. For now? Yeah. Yes. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. In Jesus' name. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Anonymous. You struggle with some practical things at school. You're anonymous, but we pray for you for grace 
to overcome all the challenges at school and to do well. God, thank you that you give anonymous grace, more grace, to be able to do what anonymous need to do in Jesus' name. Amen. And I pray for focus, anonymous, grace, and focus in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Malicella? Yes, you say thank you for the prayers. I pray that your son will grow from strength to strength in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Only for fears? Yes, you want to say thank you for all the prayers. We give honor to God. You got 69% for your subject. A day in all studies, that's good. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you for the miracle, O oh God. And we praise God for this, and we give him the honor. We pray. Amen. Marie, we are pray for Smithy's salvation in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray that you work in his heart and that he will come to salvation in Jesus' name. That his anger will be, he will be delivered of his anger in Jesus' name. And that he will be humbled, humble before God, and we pray that God will revive his marriage. There will be peace and unity in Jesus' name. We pray also for his grandchild, that he will have a good relationship with the grandchild. We pray for Smithy. Amen. Lydia Makoka. We pray for the damage, lung and liver of your brother. Lydia. Father, we pray for healing. Thank you, Lord, that distance is not a limitation. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for healing. In Jesus' name. Amen. Flora, I pray for you for protection in the name of Jesus. And demonic dreams that attack your father, we rebuke those demonic dreams and say, away from Flora in the name of Jesus. Satan, the Lord, rebuke you. Leave Flora in the name of Jesus. Amen. Any it's your birthday to do today. Happy birthday. We all say happy birthday to Henny. Henny, geluk met jou verjaarsdag. Give Henny a, God, give God a hand for Henny. Amen. <laughs> Lord, we pray for Henny. We pray for blessings. We pray that you revive his life. Thank you, Lord, that your hand is upon him. And thank you, Lord, for healing in his body. And thank you, Lord, for your word. That is within his life. And thank you that you watch over your word to perform your word in Jesus' name. Any God bless you in Jesus' name. And we all say amen and amen. Hallelujah. God is so good. Hallelujah. People who stream with us, God bless you in the name of Jesus. May God fulfill everything that he promised to you. And he will watch over his word. And may he bless you with goodness and favor in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that you fill the homes with your power, your love, your mercy, and your grace. In Jesus' name. Bless the children in their schoolwork. Bless the parents and with unity in Jesus' name. We pray for every child to be blessed. And thank you, Lord, you uphold them all with your love in Jesus' name. And everyone shout, Amen. Amen. Thank you. I pray that the rest of your week will be great in Jesus' name. Stand to your feet. Bless the people around you. In Jesus' name. Satyragan is to, I bless you with goodness and favor, protection, and love in the name of Jesus. Go and honor your parents. Don't forget those who are hungry, those who sit with depression, those who sit in old age homes. Don't forget them in the name of Jesus. Amen. Say to never, I release you now into the love of God in Jesus' name. Amen. You are now released. God bless you. Enjoy the rest of your week. Enjoy your evening's rest, your night's rest in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you. Let's praise the Lord. Amen.